How are we doing today, guys? Um, today we're going to be showing you guys how to make this box and on shape. So this is your very first activity. I'm going to walk you through using the guidelines in this walkthrough that I made over here on the left. Um, and I'm going to show you guys basically how to do it from scratch. So the first step, it says right here, click documents or click the on shape logo um, in the top left. So a lot of times when you sign in for the very first time, it'll bring you to this page. Um, and you don't want you want documents so if you can either click documents um, or if you get really lost and you just click the logo right up here um, it'll allow you to automatically come back to that scenario so um, it might help you a little bit when you get lost just to press that so if we look over here on the side it then says cl click create and select document from the drop down button so i'm going to click create i'm going to click document and then it asks me to title it so it says right here to title the document box activity. So I'm going to say box activity, and there's no reason to put your name or initials or anything like that because you're signed in and it would it would show it at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Titles up here, and now it brings me into the uh, basically the um, Part Studio interface. Um, so if I scroll down a little bit, the first thing you want to do is kind of set up your environment. So it says workspace um, units. Um, so I'm going to drop down, select the hamburger. I call this the hamburger. And basically, um, once you click that, you're going to see workspace units. And then inside of here, it says default length unit. And as you can see down here, we want millimeters. And it's in inches. Let's drop this down, press millimeter, and then go ahead and press the check mark. And what that does is allows all the units that you put in to be in millimeters. Next step is to select the sketch button, which is right here. And then it says to select the front plane. So if you see here, it says front top and right and we want the front one. Um, after you fit, hit the front it says select the front view on the cube. It might help you a little bit to use the cube um, just so that you're facing the sketch that you just created and when we create new sketches they come over here into the toolbar or I shouldn't say the toolbar, the um, browser here. So you're gonna see that select the corner rectangle so I'm gonna in order to finish this the step I missed go ahead and press the green check mark. You are um, still in sketch mode if this is double clicked, you should see this is being sketch mode. Um, if it's not there, then it won't. You'll see these icons change, and I'll show you again. The icons change when you're in a different environment. So you don't want to hit sketch again if you accidentally click out of that. And the reason is because is it'll create another sketch, and I'll show you that. Um, see, it creates sketch number two, and that's not what we want to do. So in order to go back to that initial sketch we made, you can double click it to return. Um, once you're in this, it then says to go ahead and click the corner rectangle. So up here, there's two drop downs um, within this, and you can hit corner rectangle. We start everything from the origin, and what we're going to do is we're just going to make a phantom, um, no measurements yet or anything like that, just a, just a rectangle that we can kind of mess with. Um, you can hold the right click on your mouse, and that'll rotate like you can see here. And if I ever get lost, I can just use the view cube here um, to help me get back into the world I need to. Again, because I clicked off of that, you'll see now that I'm back in extrusion mode. So you're going to go ahead and get back into that sketch. Um, it says all the things, starting by clicking on the origin, move to the uh, top right. I did that. Next thing is to select the dimension while I'm in the sketch mode. So you come over here, and you're going to see um, a dimensioning tool, which is right here. Sorry, it moved a little bit because I'm in split screen. Um, right here in dimensioning stool, press the edge itself. You can unclick, you just press once, fully click, and then bring it up. And now it's highlighted and you can type in whatever you need to. Um, so it says right here, it says select the top line of the square by clicking it once, moving your mouse up, and then clicking your mouse again, um, and put you in 100 millimeters. So we're going to do that. Press enter. You don't have to put millimeters in because we set that unit up originally. Press enter. You can use the mouse to scroll in and scroll out, and then hold the um, scroll wheel in to pan, which move you basically around. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. The next thing it does is it says repeat these steps, but select the left or the right side. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're still actually in the dimensioning, and you can see because it's highlighted here. So you can press that edge, go over, and again press 100, press enter, and now we have a square basically. Um, again, rotate it, and it's just a 2D object. So it says select the top line of the square. We did that. Repeat the three steps, but select the left side. We did that. And now it says to go ahead and press that green check mark, which is right up there. And now you can see we have our sketch. We have all of our pieces um, that we need, and we're going to move on. 
The next part is to extrude it to make it three-dimensional. Um, so basically what you're going to see here is click the extrude command. And the extrude command and most of your commands you're going to want to make from 2D to 3D objects is up here. We can go ahead and select extrude. It says to select the face that you want. In this case, we want the only face that exists. It can get a little confusing with all these um, work planes that are kind of in there. So what I like to do is come over here and press these eyeballs. These are your three planes that are visible right now. So you can go ahead and press the eyeball, press the eyeball, press the eyeball. And that'll remove those. It makes it a little easier for you to understand. Don't worry, you've still got the view cube over here to tell you what view um, you're looking at. So I selected that. And it says select the inside profile of the square and then go ahead and press 50 millimeters. So right here into depth, I'm going to change that to 50. Press enter. Um, then it says click the, uh, the green box, press OK. And now we basically have our little box here. So I'm going to go back to front, and then again, if I ever get lost, I kind of just go to the corner right here. Um, makes it a little easier for you to mess with this. Click the green check box, and I believe we're done with that. Yep, next part is to fill it, or fillet. Um, fillet tool, again, you're out of this. Now you see here it created an extrusion. Your sketch is grayed out. It's still there, but it's just invisible right now. You can see the eyeball, which allows that visibility to disappear or reappear. The extrusion is made, so now we can edit and modify this specific object. So you'll see here it says fillet. So fillet is actually right here. Don't be mistaken with the chamfer over here. We'll talk about that one later. Um, so make sure you're in fillet. Press fillet. And all it's asking you to do here is to select all of the edges and make sure that they're eight millimeters. So what I like to do first is to change the value. And then I go and actually select each one of the edges so I can see live time what it's doing. And all it's doing is making so those edges are not sharp um, so that they're a little bit less dangerous. And you can see it looks like I'm done, but if I use the view cube, I can now see that I missed a couple edges back here. And I can use and hold the right click and I can rotate the object around to get to that last little difficult one. Um, go to the left side just to make it easier. You can press these little arrows and they'll jump so that you can see. Um, and again, rotate. And I like to go to that top right corner. This is the isometric view of this object. Go ahead and once you're done, it says, if you scroll down, it says press the green checkbox or enter finish. Um, you can just press enter or the green check mark, doesn't matter. I like to always press the green check mark, it makes me feel like I've accomplished something. So this is the preview of what you should have. And again, as you look at it, it looks just like mine. So I'm good to go. Add a hole to the box is the next part. Um, so basically it says go to the original sketch by double clicking um, the sketch one in the feature area. So now we're going to go back to that sketch. Once you double click it, you'll see the extrusion disappear. Don't worry, you didn't delete anything. It's just going into that sketch mode again. So you'll see they're grayed out. Um, and we're going to go into that front mode here. It says select the line tool select the line tool which is up here it says draw a line from the bottom left corner of the box in the upward direction 50 millimeters so i'm going to start from the origin i'm going to go up 50. press enter it didn't do anything as you can see um, i'm just going to click randomly here and get close to it i'm also going to create create another line that goes over um, and I can, if I ever get lost or I want to end the command, you can just press escape once and press escape twice and that'll kind of disappear everything. Um, while we're still in this sketch, we don't want to clear or press the checkbox yet because we want to dimension those now um, just to make sure that they're perfect. So we're going to go ahead and click. We click once, click back over, 50, enter. And again, we want this one. And I'm just kind of jumping around here because in this step by step it'll tell you all this here so we select a line draw a line from the bottom corner upward direction at 50 millimeters draw another line across the box and top line um, towards the enter click the green check mark or press enter so i'm gonna go ahead and press the green check mark and it makes it look like we didn't do anything um, so the real important part here is to select the eyeball for sketch one you can see it's on the back side or you can't see anything until you turn the eyeball on the reason we're turning that on is because we want to use these features to create the hole that we're trying to, to do right now. So it says rotate the box, and again, I rotated the box, and I'll make it so that it's pretty. Rotate the box so you can see the line you drew across the box. It says select the hole command. Hole command, if you look up here, is right here. Go ahead and click hole. First thing it's going to ask you to do, and we'll scroll down and keep going, select the end of the line. So it's looking basically for that point right there. And you can see it automatically generates a hole inside of the object, but we need to mess with some commands in here to make that, that correct. 
So it then says, select the merge scope, AKA the part you want the hole um, to be in. So if I select here, it's gonna ask me what part I want to actually make this hole um, go through, or again, if, if I wanted something else to happen here. Um, it says select the opposite direction icon and if the hole preview is going in the away, and it should, it could, it's gonna go to the opposite direction. So the opposite switch arrow is right here and you'll see it goes through that object. Um, we put uh, a standard, don't mess with any of these other things. Um, it says select the opposite, it says leave 30 millimeters, and even gave you a little preview of what that's supposed to look like. The barn hole should go through, and as I can show you here, it does, it goes through just like it shows here. Change the diameter to 30 millimeters, mine's already at 30 millimeters, and now I can click the green check mark. If it didn't work, which it didn't, which is what I wanted, hole one did not generate properly, no target selected. So what I didn't do is select the actual part correctly. And as you can see, um, now that I do that, I press the green check mark and it works. So whenever there's red over here, and some of the tutorials should have showed you that, whenever there's red right here, there means there's something wrong um, with that specific feature. So it's important to keep an eye on here if you see any red um, before you move on. It says click the green check mark or enter, I did that. So it says zoom out a little when you scroll wheel, move the box to the top right corner. So we are completely done, that's the box. Um, Basically what you want to do is zoom out a little, pan to the top right a little, and then depending, um, what I like to do also is remove that sketch again just so it looks prettier. Um, whatever, depending on your machine, um, you are going to take a screenshot, and in this case I'm just going to take a screenshot of this area, and it's important to get the object itself as well as your name in the top right corner and make sure you know where that's going. Um, I took a screenshot and then you're gonna submit that into Google Classroom. Um, that's it, I hope this helps and if you have any questions, please email your teacher.